Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live. And I am going to show you today how I made an, actually a fun fold card, which is something that I don't do very often, as you probably know if you've watched my videos before. Um, but I made a fun fold card with the uh, Happy Hedgehogs Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the really cute ones from the current Stampin' Up! January to June mini uh, catalog. 2022 I guess it is mini catalog and um like I said it's a really quick and easy because you know I don't do much that isn't quick and easy <laughs> but when I do fun folds I always make sure that they're super quick and easy and this one is it's a, a shorter card base um the pale papaya and then it's got like a little card base inside it so it's kind of two cards in one but it's really really easy to put together um so I thought I'd show you how I did it today uh, on my video so hey Carol and Bonnie thanks so much for joining today so the happy hedgehog stamp set is a really cute one it's got some cute little hedgehog images and then there's a coordinating punch which you probably can see better if I actually turned it over um, there's a coordinating punch that punches out this stamped hedgehog image you can also stamp out um, just like the outline of the hedgehog and then there's like a another little piece that you can layer for the is it quills or whatever the hedgehogs have on their back so hey Debbie and Danette and Penny and I don't know if I missed anyone else I if I did I apologize but um so anyhow, so I've got um, the hedgehog builder punch that coordinates with it. So it punches out this hedgehog, or you can kind of create your own. There are little dots here that will punch out hedgehog eyes. And then there's the um, outline of the hedgehog and then the little quills or whatever. So hey, Linda, thanks for joining and um, appreciate you finding me here and uh, glad that you're uh, able to hop in for a video. So um, so the stamp set's got some cute little sentiments in it, um, some nice images in it. And again, it's just kind of a fun little little stamp set bundle. Um, and again, it's available right now from Stampin' Up! in the current mini catalog. So let me get this out of the way and talk about a couple other things that I used. I did use the largest of the circle dies from the la uh, um, Tasteful Labels. I knew I was going to say the wrong one. I was going to call, call it layering and it, oh, no, it's Tasteful Labels dies. Um, these are from the annual catalog and so I used that to cut out the sentiment on here. And then my favorite die set ever, the stitched rectangles. I used the third largest one, which is this one, to cut out the um, little panel here as well as the panel I don't know if you noticed the panel on the inside has also got the stitches on it and um, so I used it to cut out both of those all right let me set this aside talk about a couple of updates and then um, we'll get going on the card so you probably already know but I just want to remind you that the waves of the ocean uh, product collection is available now from Stampin' Up. It's a beautiful set of products. You can order everything together with one item number if you want to. Otherwise, you can order individually. There's a stamp set bundle, which has got a stamp set and dies in it. Um, there's just the stamp set, just the dies. And then there is the Waves of the Ocean 12 by 12 designer series paper, uh, blue foils 12 by 12 specialty papers, and then the rhinestone waves basic jewels uh, that are all uh, available with the Waves of the Ocean product collection. So again, you can order them all together. You can order each item individually. However you want to do it is, you know, whatever works best for you and your ordering it works for me. I know a fun fold card, Rosie. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, um, it, and uh, yeah, I kind of was going for the spring theme, even though it was 70 degrees here yesterday and we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. So I don't know if spring has sprung, I guess. <laughs> so, hey, Bree, thanks for joining. And Kay from North Carolina. So, all right, so this is available. The stamp set and dies and the bundle pricing will be in the next annual catalog. However, the beautiful papers and the um, jewels will not. So make sure these are available only while supplies last. So make sure you're getting your orders put in uh, for the papers and the jewels and get the stamp set too, because you're going to be sad if you don't have it. <laughs> All right. So Stampin' Up! has also got a savings in bloom promotion going on right now. And... Um, where you can actually get 20% off the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, as well as 13 bundles. There are some really good ones in here. These are all from the annual catalog. And there are a couple of them like the uh, Celebrate Sunflowers and Art Gallery and Garden Wishes that were actually unbundled in the current catalog that they've bundled back together and um, giving you 20% off the prices. So 
some great bundles, uh, a great discount, 20% off going on for the month of March. Um, these run through the month of March, through from March 1st to the 31st. Um, if any of the items should happen to uh, sell out or, you know, go on back order, they will be turned off temporarily, um, but they'll be turned back on hopefully by the end of the sale or before the end of the sale. So just keep an eye on it. If one of the bundles that you're wanting is starting to get low inventory, go order it now so you don't have to deal with the back order stuff. So, um, all right. Hey, Carol, thanks for joining. And then one last thing. From me, I'm offering a little bonus during for all orders of uh, $50 or greater placed through me during March. You're actually going to get a big tutorial bundle. Normally, you just get one set of tutorials with one stamp set. So normally, it would just be the March uh, Daffodil Daydream bundle that you're or tutorials that you're going to get. But I pulled out some of the older ones from the past that we've done um, that have some of the bundles that are on sale with them and I'm bundling them all together and it's like 37 projects I think in total that you will get if you order $50 or greater of anything. It doesn't have to be any of the bundles, but any order of $50 or greater placed through me during the month of March. Um, so let me know if you have questions on that and um, the details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. So all right, let's get going on the card. Hey, Karen, I actually started a minute or two, minute or two early, so um, no problem at all. All right, so the, the card stock cuts on this one are all going to be posted on my blog tomorrow, so don't worry, and I will link up the blog post in this video so that you'll be able to go find them um, because they're a little different than a standard size card. So the card base, the Pale Papaya card base, is actually cut to four and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then you score it, oops, I have it the wrong way, so then you score it at five and a half. So you're gonna have a five and a half by uh, four and a quarter panel here, and then you have like the other half, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that's how the card base goes. It's a little, a little odd. So it took me a minute to kind of get my head around it, but yep, that's how it works. Okay, then I have a piece of Heart and Home Designer Series paper, and this is cut to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth, and I have a piece of basic gray cardstock that we're gonna layer it on that is cut to four by five and a quarter. So. Um, I know, Karen, I'm doing like fun fold. This is the second one I've done in, I don't know, maybe a month or two, which is kind of odd for me. I don't, I'm not normally a fun fold person, but like I said, the ones I do are always super easy because, you know, I don't really make too many cards that aren't super easy. <laughs> so, all right, um, basic gray cardstock panels cut to four by five and a quarter. Um, so it's kind of your normal, the normal layering, if that makes sense, um, for the for a card that you would normally, or that I would normally do on a card front. I know everybody's a little different on their normals. Um, and then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna adhere it, hopefully if I can keep my adhesive on the paper, adhere it to the inside of the card base. Now, whoop, the, uh, I've moved so that the score line is over on the left-hand side of the card because this is a card that's gonna open one flap and open another flap over here. So that, as you're adhering things together, sort of pay attention uh, to make sure that you're putting things in the right place and on the right side because there's nothing worse than having to, you know, peel everything off or start over again. All right, so there we go. We're putting that on the inside, if that makes sense, of the card. And then I'm gonna flip it over and this is a little piece that is cut to two and three eighths by three and seven eighths for the um, designer series paper, and then two and a half by four for the basic gray cardstock. Hey, Akiko, thanks for joining. So, and if I didn't say hi to Karen Finkel, hi, Karen Finkel, I'm glad you're hopping in today too. So, all right, so we've got a little stamp and seal word here in these two pieces together. And again, just adhering it so that it's centered on here. The only thing to be a little bit aware of, and again, it depends on how you like things to look, but um, I guess this one, it doesn't necessarily matter, but be aware if you have directional designer series paper, just make sure that you have things lined up when you go to adhere it together so that the direction is going to be going the way that you want it to go. <laughs> so you don't want it, for instance, you know, you might not want it to, to go this direction. Maybe you do, but that's up to you. So anyway, just so you know, just if you have directional designer series paper, make sure you're paying attention how you're cutting it and how you're adhering it together. So I'm gonna put a little bit of stamp and seal on the back of this panel. And then again, I'm gonna flip this over and put it on the opposite side. And again, I'm just gonna to try to center it here, top to bottom and side to side based on the score line. All right, so that's it for the card base. Are you amazed yet? <laughs> So I don't know how, I don't keep track very well of who I've said hi to and who I haven't. Some people I say it two, three times and then other people I don't, totally don't even see. <laughs> so hey, Donna, thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. So, all right. And 
Oh, oh, sorry. I was moving things around on my computer and I just totally messed up my... All right, we're all good again. Okay, so the next thing that I've got is a piece of basic gray cardstock. This is going to make the little kind of inside card here. And this is cut to kind of a strange size. It's three and an eighth by nine. And I scored it at four and a half. The only reason for that is if you're not going to be using one of the um, die cuts, one of the rectangular die cuts, you can make this card a more normal size. Like you can go three by six and score it at three. So it's a little three by three card. Um, but I wanted mine to fit around the die cut. So that's why it's kind of an odd sized card base. All right. So again, this is three and an eighth by nine and scored at four and a half. Okay. And then I went ahead and cut one of these ahead of time. This is just basic white cardstock, and I used the third largest of the stitched rectangle dies to um, cut this piece of cardstock. Got basic gray ink and the little, the littler of the two hedgehogs from the hedgehog or the happy, happy hedgehogs. I wanted to call it hedgehog happiness, and I know that's not the one. That's the old stamp set. <laughs> so, all right. So there we go. We're just going to stamp that cute little hedgehog here in the corner. And basic gray ink. And then I'm gonna grab my light uh, crumb cake Stampin' Blends marker. And we're gonna do some of the, what I call Amy coloring, which is like the super simple, nothing is blended, um, not very nicely done, just kind of a basic coloring <laughs> of my little hedgehog here. So um, he's pretty easy to color. The only thing that's a little, you have to be sort of careful of is on his little back, just sort of notice that he's got kind of lumpy Lumpy lumps, I don't know. <laughs> Is lumpy lumps a thing? <laughs> so, hey, Linda, thanks for joining. So glad you're here, glad you found me. And again, I'm just gonna take this and color in the little body on my hedgehog. And then just keep on coloring, go right up over the top of the, do hedgehogs have quills? I guess I'm, I know porcupines are called quills. I'm not sure what it's called on a hedgehog. So I should have looked it up before we started, but there's probably somebody who knows that that's on. I just don't, I'm not, you know, I think it's cute, but I don't know all the right words for it. So again, just some really quick coloring, um, not wasting a lot of time doing shading and blending and all that sort of thing. Okay, so that is it for the inside of the little card. We're just gonna take some stamp and seal and we're gonna adhere that inside the card base. And again, this is my little um, basic gray card. You wanna be careful, again, just because it's kind of, you have to stop and think for a minute because it's sort of a backwards thing. So you're gonna make sure that your card, you're putting this in sort of backwards, if that makes sense, um, so that your card is gonna fold the right way once you put it on the card front, or on the card base, so. All right, we're gonna hear those together. So, hey, Jillian. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree, I don't know any, oh, so they're, they are quills, says Karen Finkel. She probably is right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, like I said, those are not, that's not my thing. I don't know. So, um, oh, spines. Ah, that could be. Yeah, that's probably what they are. I was thinking quills didn't sound right for, for uh, hedgehogs, but you're, yeah, I think you're right, Carol. So, all right. So then I'm going to take that card. I'm folding it in half. And we're gonna take stamp and seal and I'm putting it on the back side of the card. Again, it's the, the side that I have got my basic white panel stuck to. I'm flipping it over in the back side and putting the adhesive on there. And then we're gonna take that and I'm just gonna to try to get it centered here, top to bottom and up and down. And I'm gonna stick it here on the inside of the card base. All right, so we got this flap going. We've got this flap going. So I'm gonna take this now I'm gonna fold and use my bone folder and give this a quick crease here. I'll probably flip it over and give it another quick crease here so that hopefully we'll get a good solid crease on it. And so you can see the cards starting to come together already. Like I said, super easy. <laughs> That's kinda, kinda how I do all of my fun fold cards. I'm not, not a um, fun fold aficionado or whatever you wanna call it, expert. <laughs> so, all right, basic gray ink again, and I've got the tree image here from the um, Happy Hedgehog stamp set. So, hey, Terry, thank you so much, I appreciate that. So, that's according to Alexa. Okay, Alexa probably knows, because I know I certainly don't. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna stamp my little um, tree image here on basic white cardstock in basic gray ink. And then I'm gonna grab my little bird and I'm also gonna grab my third to the largest stitched rectangle die. So I kind of have a general idea of where I wanna stamp the little bird so that he's still, or she's still, whatever it is, the bird is still inside the frame. 
move that down just a little so hopefully I don't stamp it too crazy. And if I stamped it in a slightly different spot, the little hedgehog is just fine. I think I probably did stamp it a little bit, um, maybe a little bit closer together than I did the, the sample card, but that is fine because the little hedgehog is actually um, going to be punched out so it doesn't matter where he where he lands on the card. So, all right, I'm going to stamp a couple little pieces of grass around the bird, little strands, strands of grass. I don't know. Oh, see, now I can't even come up with any smart words to say. So, and then I'm going to take my little butterfly here and also stamp that in uh, basic gray ink. And again, this is, they're all from the same stamp set from the uh, Happy, Hedge, Happy Hedgehogs stamp set. And then I'm going to grab some Stampin' Blends markers, and we are going to start coloring, and I better set that somewhere where I know where I'll, uh, to find it again. All right, I've got my dark crumb cake uh, Stampin' Blends marker, so blades of grass. See, why, I don't know why I can't color and stamp and talk and think at the same time. It just doesn't work. <laughs> so my brain, I guess, can only do one thing at a time, and it's, you know, it's working on stamping right now. So coming up with the right words for everything, it's not doing well with that. <laughs> So, all right, again, I've got dark uh, crumb cake Stampin' Blends marker that I'm using here to do my little bit of coloring. I am using the um, bullet tip end because I found it to be a little bit easier um, with these types of images to color with the bullet tip end, and I think I've got all the tree colored in. Then I'm going to grab um, soft succulent. Whoops, yeah, that's soft succulent. I thought it was a uh, pool party for a second, but nope, it's not going to grab soft succulent and we're going to color in all the little leaves and again this is just super quick little you know outline the leaf color it in and not spending a lot of time worrying about um, doing uh, shading or anything like that on these it's just mostly about getting the color on it so hopefully y'all are enjoying your Tuesday um, it's like I said, it was a beautiful day yesterday here, like almost shorts and t-shirts weather. And then this morning we got up and it was 37 <laughs> and the high is only supposed to be 46 today. And they're forecasting 90% chance of snow for us tomorrow. I don't have any idea how much snow, um, hopefully not very much, but I guess that's spring in New Jersey. Um, so got to get used to that. <laughs> so, um, but like I said, it's, we haven't had a terrible winter this year, so I can't complain too much about it. All right, going around here and just finishing up the last couple of leaves, and then we'll move on and we'll color the blades of grass. With Again, this is soft succulent, and I'm using the light soft succulent Stampin' Blends marker. Um, if I really wanted to take a lot of time and um, color it, I would, you know, you can do the shading on it, but this one is such a, it's kind of a, a hand-drawn look to it. And I didn't feel like I needed to spend a lot of time doing a lot of shading and worrying about exactly how I was coloring everything in. Um, just again, just kind of wanted to get color on the card. And there again, we're just kind of scratching over the top of the, the blades of grass and then coloring the little leaf on the flower that the bird is holding. And next up, I have got uh, light, eh, it was light pale papaya. Yep, I think that's the one I used. Hopefully it is, if not, Yep, that was the one, okay. So I've got light pale pap papaya, and just gonna color in the little flowers on the tree, the petals of the flowers, I should say. We're gonna color in the flower centers in a different color. Yeah, and it's, yeah, we had kind of a windstorm come through here as well. I saw Carol say that it's windy where she is. We had a bit of a windstorm, and actually there were some of the schools started a little late this morning because there were so many trees down and power out um, in a lot of areas around here. Thankfully, we didn't lose power. Um, we didn't have any major trees down, just some branches and things on the road, but um, definitely still drivable here. But yeah, some of the schools and things around our area were... Um, late this morning because they had a mess in the road. <laughs> so, all right, got dark so saffron, and we're going to color in the centers of the flowers with dark so saffron. And I'm also going to do the little beak on the bird. All right, then I have got light and dark fresh freesia Stampin' Blends markers. I'm going to start with the dark one. I am in a New Jersey in a very small town called Mendham. Um, and again, starting with the dark, sorry, I don't know if I said that already. Um, 
and I'm about an hour straight west of New York City, if that helps you at all to figure out where I am. Morristown is kind of the, you know, big town in our area, which isn't really a very big town, but, you know, bigger town. <laughs> there are a lot of little towns around where I live at, um, which is, is funny to me because before moving to New Jersey, I sort of assumed that it was very, um, very much like New York and very, uh, I don't know, a lot of big towns and whatever. Not so much. It's a lot of little towns out here. So, and then I'm coming back in with light, fresh freesia, and coloring in the um, larger part of the wings. And I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to blend these together. I'm trying to keep them separate, so it just kind of gives a little bit of a um, tone, different tone look to it. Then I have got light petal pink and dark petal pink Stampin' Blends markers, and I'm gonna use those to color in my little bird belly the underbelly, whatever you want to call it on the bird. Um, starting with the light, add a little bit of dark, kind of in the areas where there's already the shading. And then pool party is the last one that we've got here. And I'm gonna use that to color the top of the bird, the wings and such, the wings and the head. And hopefully I've started with light, yep. Um, so I usually, when I'm doing my Stampin' Blends, if I am gonna do any blending, I generally start with the light first and then um, go to the darker color uh, because I find that you can always layer on more color. It's hard to take it off if you put on too much color um, and then you, you're sad about that. So usually I start with the, with the light and then come back and add in a little dark and then blend it if need be. All right, so that's it for most of the card fronts. I'm gonna grab, the, again, the same die that I used to cut the inside piece which with, which is the third largest of these stitched rectangle dies. And you will notice I am gonna chop off the top of the tree a little bit, which um, it happens. <laughs> I couldn't get it to fit on the card front any other way, um, but I colored the whole thing just because uh, I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna end up chopping it off at, and I wanted to make sure that I had the whole thing colored. So, all right, so let me run this through my die cutting machine. which is off here to my left-hand side. I have mine set up on a separate table in the hopes that I don't wiggle the camera too much when I do the die cutting. All right, so there we are with that. And then I'm gonna take a little stamp and seal and we are gonna adhere that to the card front. And yep, that one just ran out, which I was expecting it to. So I had a refill all set up and ready to go here. Stamp and seal. All right, take that and close up my card front and then go ahead and stick it on here. Again, the main thing that I'm trying to do, which is always more challenging when I've got the camera in the middle of things, um, is just get it centered on the little card base that we've got going over here. Next up, we're gonna stamp our little porcupine. Um, where's my punch? There we go. Um, when you're stamping the porcupine, or porcupine, hedgehog, <laughs> Goodness. Um, when you're stamping it, just be aware of the direction that it is in the punch based on how your paper is going to work out. So I'm going to try to stamp mine so that he's over here so that I can slide it in the edge of the punch and punch it. Um, so that's the only thing with the builder punches is sometimes you do have to be a little careful about where you are um, stamping to make sure that you're able to get at it with the punch when you want to do that. So uh, brown and red, the bird would be a robin for spring. That would be perfect. Yep. Um, so Hey, Amy, thanks for hopping in late. No worries at all. And that is from the Heart and Home Designer Series paper. Um, I don't even know. I think I said that earlier in the video, but if I did not, there you go. It's the Heart and Home, <laughs> which I, pro I may have forgotten because sometimes I get busy yapping and not talking about what I should be talking about. So, all right, I've got the Light Crumb Cake Stampin' Blends marker. And again, we're just going to do the same thing on this little hedgehog that I just call the porcupine very incorrectly. And... Just gonna do kind of the outline and then fill in the color on it and try not to color over his eye, which I almost did that both times when I, um, both of the hedgehogs on the, the sample card, I almost colored right over the eye. I don't know why I was having an, an issue with the eye, but um, it was just, like I said, I almost colored right over it and went, whoop, there's an eye there, yikes. Um, if you do happen to do something like that, Stampin' Up! does have a color lifter, which is basically a clear marker um, and a lot of times you can use that to fix little boo-boos, particularly things like that where you color over an eye accidentally. Um, it, it's pretty easy to take the color lifter and just color over it and remove the color from it. 
So um, just make sure you've got paper underneath it because it will kind of push the, the color away from and through the paper a little bit deeper. Um, so make sure you've got scrap paper or something under it so you don't end up with a glob of color that you didn't want on your desk. So, all right. So there we go. We've got our little porcupine. See, I said it again, hedgehog <laughs> colored. And um, I've got the hedgehog builder punch and we're just gonna slide this in. He's not too difficult or she's not too difficult to line up. You just kind of want to make sure you've got the little feet lined up in there, the little nose lined up in there, and then the little quills or spines or whatever we've decided that they're called. Um, there's little kind of dents in there that you can line up and punch out your little hedgehog. So, all right, and the extra little pieces will get those shoved out of the way. And then I'm gonna grab a couple Stampin' Dimensionals or my chopped up half Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere the um, hedgehog to the card front. Grab maybe three of the half ones. And then I'm just gonna take it and put this together so that it looks like they're sort of, you know, having a, having a little meeting, having a little chat here. That was kind of what I wanted the look to, to be on here is that you got your two little, two little critter friends um, joining up for a chat. All right, last thing we have left to do is the sentiment. And I almost lost my piece of, <laughs> this is pale papaya cardstock. And um, we're just gonna heat emboss the sentiment. And again, the sentiment's from the same stamp set from the Happy Hedgehog stamp set. Got Versamark ink. And we're gonna make sure that it's good and inky. And then I'm gonna stamp that here on pale papaya cardstock. And then we'll just sprinkle it with white embossing powder from the basics embossing powders. Hey, Jeannie, thanks for, for uh, hopping in and for uh, letting me know you like the card. I thought it turned out kind of cute. So, um, all right, gonna take uh, white embossing powder from the basics embossing powders, sprinkle it over the Versamark, tap it off and make sure we've got good coverage, which it looks like we do. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on my embossing powder because um, if you don't, I have blown it all over my desk with the heat tool before and that's not much fun to clean up. <laughs> so, all right, so Stampin' Up! has a heat tool that has got two settings on it. The level one setting is for heat emboss or for um, drying. So if you're doing things like watercoloring or using an ink that takes a little bit longer to dry, um, you can definitely use that to speed it up a little bit. And then um, the level two setting is for heat embossing. So that's a little bit hotter, which is what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna take that and turn it towards my stamped image here and give it a second and wait for it to turn that bright white color. And then you know it's kind of done, done cooking. With heat embossing, you don't have to like go really quickly, but you do wanna keep it moving along because you can burn embossing powder and that's not very pretty when it turns all brown and yucky. Um, so got that done and ready to go. I'm giving it a second to cool off as well because um, when you do heat embossing, it is a plastic substance and if you touch it right away, it will smear and you'll have kind of a mess. So don't do that. <laughs> All right, then I've got the little circle die from the Tasteful Labels dies. This is the larger of the two circles and the sentiment just barely fits inside it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine over here and we're almost done. to run it through and then I think, oh, that's not lined up right. Okay. All right, so there we go. I'm pop that out. And there's our sentiment. And we'll just grab a couple Stampin' Dimensionals and put that on the back of the little die cut and put it on the card front. And that is all. I actually had looked at adding some additional embellishments, but I felt like it kind of got too busy. I couldn't figure out what to put on it and where to put it um, because there's kind of a lot going on on this card front. And I just didn't wanted to make sure that um, it didn't get too overwhelming and that I ended up having it looking like a mess. So I stayed away from the embellishments. Um, the only thing to be careful of is when you're putting this sentiment on is just make sure that you give it enough space that you, your card can open over here. Um, so make sure you're not hanging over the edge of the card. That's all. So, all right. So that is it for the card today. Can you believe it? Um, fancy fold or fun fold for me, which I never do. And done in like 20 minutes, which is, you know, 
<laughs> also an added bonus because I don't do anything that takes a long time. So, all right. So that is it for my card share today. I appreciate you all being here. I am glad that you were able to join me and thanks for all the sweet comments. Um, I will plan to be back on my YouTube channel around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday and then back here live on Facebook again around two o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. So thanks again for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday and we will talk soon.